Just a quick update on the low boy trailer here. Had some people mention that their actuators um, tend to feed backwards um, and not hold the weight. I don't have that issue with these. They, uh, they hold nice and solid, but to um, combat that, I've made a new piece here and it'll have these pieces that will lock into place. And so we'll, uh, we'll get that installed and uh, that'll prevent the trailer from lowering um, when you don't want it to. Another item that has been brought up is that the neck here, when it's not attached to a truck, sags and then that also I guess can be an issue while driving um, if for some reason this there was no longer pressure right here that can come loose um, so this was originally just locked in with this screw here but I have gone ahead and made a change in that design as well so here we now have this hook that will slide into place here and if we look on the other side, we've got this handle. Now it's pulled out at the moment, but if we twist it into the spot, you see it, it locks in. And there's a pin down inside here that that handle um, actuates. And so you pull that out and then you would back your trailer into position. And then you would twist this and it would then lock that in place so that, that is just that's attached there it's not coming out until you again pull that pin and then it'll release so i made a template if you don't want to reprint these um, side frame pieces of the gooseneck this template then gives you the hole to drill for the new um, locking system bar When installing the pawl hooks, you need to be sure to hold them in position against the sides of the gooseneck. This uh, makes sure that they stay where they will align with the lock on the base so that everything will actuate correctly later on. And there needs to be tension as you thread that through. You can't drill that hole out or those hooks won't rotate when you rotate the handle. Once the threaded rod is flush with the outside edge of the um, gooseneck there, we need to put our handle in place so that we can continue to thread this in and everything will stay in their correct locations. So we then thread that into the handle Then here I'm checking the angle of the handle to the hooks so that I can hold that in the position I want so that it will actuate the hooks um, with the handle ending up in the position that I want. For the lock handle in the first frame, you're first going to screw this handle onto the threaded rod and then we feed it in right here and as we feed it in we're going to put in a spring that will go over that threaded rod following the spring is a washer following the washer is the nut find it easiest to spin the handle first to get that nut started and then once it's on there you can get it started into the next hole and I just use this allen wrench 
to then spin that nut as we feed the threaded rod in. You want to go so that the handle is all the way seated in and there is tension on that spring. That handle should be able to travel out about 8 to 10 millimeters and it should automatically snap back into place when that go. And you want to be able to pull it out and twist it so that it can lock out as well. You may want to use some Loctite or double nut so that uh, this nut won't loosen over time. Then verify that when you pull the handle, the threaded rod completely clears that gap so that the latch will be able to make it all the way in and then you can lock it in place. So there we have it. We twist this here. Now our neck's locked in place, and then we can lift it up. You can see that those paws snap into individual spots, so you can choose your right height, say we like it there. Set it just back down a little bit so that it's locked in place. Now there's no tension on the actuators themselves, it's all just on the locks. You can then lift it up a little bit, release the locks, and then set it back down. And then we pull our handle, and the next released.